there's there's some stuff that I've definitely like never never spoken about to do with it that was really 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 severe, and it was a problem. My business partner, he um, when we started the business, became an alcoholic about three four years in because it was just too tough, mm. and then he had like severe suicidal ideation. He actually didn't tell me at the time, and this is why when I was reading about your story, I could relate to so much of it because. He, I didn't say what I was going through to him. He didn't say it to me. And then it was like, after we'd sold the business that he was like, I used to stand on the train platforms and think about jumping in front of the train. Oh, and I was terrible. like, and he never told me. And, and the, but there was, and you, do, I didn't know what alcoholism or really mental health was at the mm. time, but I'd go downstairs 3 a.m. in the morning and I'd open up the laundry room and he's in there with a bottle of wine at 3 a.m. The lights are off and he's just drinking mm. it, sat on the clothes. I'm like, get off my fucking clothes. I'm joking. <laughs> no, I'm, and I was like, what the hell's going on? But, you know, and I, I read similar things, similar sort of story or narratives in your story where, you know, you were having moments of that, that kind of like ideation. You were having moments of suicidal ideation. And Yeah, I mean, there's, there's some stuff that I've definitely like never, never spoken about to do with it. That was really, really, really severe. And it was a problem. And, and, and it was only until I saw myself after that I was like, right, I need to fix myself. Mm. There was like a few pictures of me on a boat and I'm all like bloated out and I call it pills and booze face. And I was like this, like my face was just like 10 times more than it is now. And uh, I just didn't like myself very much. Then I made a change. And the same thing happened this year with, with, with that sort of thing as well. But the problem we had in the band, and I don't blame anybody for this. I don't want to seem like I'm whining or moaning. Mm. Oh my God, look at my life, whatever. But it feels to me like when we were in the band, the best way to secure us because of how big it got was just lock us in our rooms. And of course, what's in the room? Mini bar. Mm. So at a certain point I thought, well, I'm going to have a party for one. And that just seemed to carry on throughout many years of my life. And then you look back, how long you've been drinking and stuff for you're like, Jesus Christ, that's a long time. Even for someone who's, you know, as long as I was. Um, it was wild, but it was like the only way you could get frustration out in the day or being in tra like trapped and, and you know i spoke about to somebody about this and, and and in child development you know as a teen the one thing you need is is freedom to make choices and freedom to do stuff and it was the one thing that although we could do anything we wanted it seemed from the outside that we were always locked in a room at night and then it would be car hotel room stage sing locked mm. so it was like they pulled the dust cloth off let us out for a minute and then woohoo and then it's like back underneath here and i'm like good so crazy because you're right the public will think the absolute opposite we think Oh, One Direction, those guys have got total freedom. All the money and what they can do, anything. Mm. <clears throat> Everyone's, you know, in their nine to five jobs just thinking, I'd love to have that level of freedom that Liam Payne has to do anything. But you can't yeah. do anything, right? It's the opposite. No, I mean, it, because we were young, I mean, I actually wanted to speak to you about this mm. as well. So obviously you've, you've reached Stratosphere Heights at a young age. It's like, what I found was, I didn't know I was the boss until a long, until like a few months ago. I still don't even feel like I am now. Like I'm such a child. And everyone I work with is like- Don't be rage. Older than me and wiser than me. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing here with these people? So it's like, you you, you know, when we were 17, I thought the security guard was like in charge of me. Like I was like, oh, can we leave the room? No, oh, okay, then not to worry. I'll just stay here. That's what I was like. So I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, and, and no one, there's no guidebook. They don't give you a little DVD on the way in saying, here, you're a pop star. Like, <laughs> this is what you gotta do. So I'm like in the room, like, what are we allowed to leave? And then eventually that becomes a, like an angry person. And I was, yeah. because there was points where it was toxic and it was difficult. Don't get me wrong. We had the best time ever. We did. But there was moments where through, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a big movement on it at the moment and people overworking and, and like, you don't realize you have a choice at that point. Mm. But in those shows, sometimes they don't give you the choice because you want the dream, but you have to realize there is a sacrifice for that, you know, rather than it just, and like I say, I never want to come on, on these things and whine about stuff. Like I made my own choices in life, you know, being an alcoholic, doing whatever else, that was my choice. So, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be whiny, but it's just like, there was a sacrifice and I know what I did sacrifice to be here, you know? Everything, what I've come to learn, everything in life, all the good shit comes with a cost. Oh. And I've, I've learned just from my own experience, like my success, my success is very different from yours. We went very different paths, but came with a clear cost because you can't go from being a 18 year old kid that's like nicking Chicago town pizzas to feed himself <laughs> to being, to building a company worth 300 million within six, seven years. What without, a great sentence that was, like, by the way. I can, I, like <laughs> I was a fucking lose, like loner. Like I was in my room for summers upon summers on my own 
for just, you know, because I could eight my parents weren't talking to me. They said, don't call us until you get back to university. Years on my, so I wasn't speaking to my family. No friends, because I couldn't even afford to see them. That was the cost for me. And what that made is someone who, again, isn't very social. On the weekends, I spend 99% of my time alone. Same. And people are like, oh my God, I'd love to be. I'm like, well, and then, and then I have the same thing you have, which is my brain is always has a thousand tabs open. And I can't just go and sit on a oh. sun lounger and tan. Like tan? Tanny what's nights, what's what my brain I mean, going to do then? Sitting in the bath is one of my worst ones as well. But that's it. You're right. And you know what? Like, think about someone as simple as someone who like plays guitar. Mm. The amount of time you have to spend alone with that instrument, you're going to yeah. be missing a couple of other yeah. things that happen in life. Exactly. And that's it's what it's cost. like. Exactly. Right? And that was for us, as, for us as teens growing up, you know, I think people, like I said, I started at 14. That's nuts. Like I was in my school. And I remember very clearly the moment that, that like the X Factor like moment happened when I was, when I was younger. And I was playing football on a field and we had an all girls school right next door mm. to us. So I'm just playing football like it's a normal day. I've had a few like people like shout me out in the street where it's like, cool, I'm, you know, 14 years old. The whole school from the other school is on the fence. You're joking. And I'm like banned from that field for life. At first, how does it feel? It was wild, but what their people Good don't- wild? Yeah, it was, it was amazing. I can I, was like, I went from like zero to like, yeah. I was the, you know, it was- Goat, uh, the, the king thing is, of the school. I always say this to people, I wasn't world famous when I was 14, but I was famous within my world. So it's like, well, I didn't leave Wolverhampton and everybody in Wolverhampton knew who the hell I was. So I couldn't go anywhere. So- you know, and, and at that point, I can't afford a security guard. I'm not special enough to have any of these like additives. I'm still on the, the 794A to, to, <laughs> to, you know, my little, my little Christian school. And then what happened over time is, and I, I, you know, people are people, they, they do what they do. But there was, a, there was one significant moment for me where I knew that I lost it and I wasn't going to go back on X Factor to, to be in the band, which would have been wild, by the way. I would not have been here right now. Um, but there was a moment I was in a McDonald's with like a new girlfriend I had at the time. And it had been two years since the show. And I noticed my shows decreased in number, decreased in capacity and decreased in wages. So I was like down and out at this point. So I've had fame and lost it. And I'm like nearly 16 years old. Mm -hmm. So that's difficult to deal with anyway at that age. And then I'm in McDonald's and because everyone still knows who I am, I'm sat there and I literally remember about to take a bite of this nice juicy burger someone on the stairs goes x factor reject and the whole restaurant looks at me right i'm 15 years old and it was just horrible what a scumbag thing to say i know but it was like that's that's the thing it's like it was almost a, like a shout out to say oh you think you're special but you're still here in the most wolverhampton i guess you gotta understand where that comes from though from that person what's going well, on someone said life? something to me today it's not what you do it's what's happened to you which i thought was quite 